On to the final steps of the Prusa Mark IV-S build now, and this is a rather large chapter with lots to cover, so let's crack straight on with the Y carriage and heat bed assembly. As normal, start by retrieving your Y-axis electronics bag, as well as the Y-axis 3D printed parts from their respective boxes. With this to hand, we'll start by preparing the heat bed, taking extra care with the pre-installed sensor wires. Orientate the heat bed so that the connections in the top corner are visible. Notice the markings beneath each, the left GND and the right VCC. We'll be connecting the heat bed cables to these, one black and one red. Notice the cables have a label on one end. For this next step, we'll use the opposite end without the label. So proceed to place the black wire above the left connector, labelled GND. Remember we're using the end without the label here, before inserting a single M3x10 screw complete with an M3 washer. Hold the screw and carefully attach an M3 nylon lock nut onto the opposite side, while tightening just enough to keep everything in place for the moment. You can use the universal wrench to hold the nut as you screw into place, although do not tighten down too much just yet as we need some adjustment space. With that done, repeat this procedure for the second red wire, using the end of the cable that is not labelled, and using a single M3x10 screw, complete with washer, and an M3 nut to hold into place. Again, check to ensure they have some space to readjust. The cable cover, which we'll install next, needs the connectors to be slightly inclined towards each other. Onto the cable cover next, where we insert three M3 nuts into the shaped openings. I found these very tight, so get them into position and use the screw pulling technique if needed to ensure the nuts are right inside the recesses in the printed part. Before pushing the heat bed thermistor cable that was pre-installed on the heat bed through the bottom of the cable cover. We have one piece of nylon filament remaining, which we now use to insert into the hole in the heat bed cable cover. Don't let the nylon filament stick out too much on the other side. Also, when inserting the nylon filament, ensure that the filament does not damage the thermistor cables under the printed part. With that done, slide the cable guide under the heat bed cable connectors we just installed, and secure with a single M3x10 screw from the top. Tighten the screw firmly. Note that the curve of the filament should bend upwards. You'll find one final textile sleeve remaining at this point, which we now use to wrap the cable bundle, including the nylon filament, sliding the sleeve as far back towards the heat bed as possible. Before we attach the top cover, and leaving a little slack with the thermistor cable, secure the cover into place using two M3x10 screws, both going directly into the M3 nuts we previously installed. This needs to be quite tight, enough so that there's no gap left between the two cover pieces, taking care not to pinch any cables in between at the same time. We're going to assemble the Y carriage next, and we'll begin by preparing our bearings. The process is the same as before here, so begin by wiping the bearings down, and with bearings ready, grab a bearing clip, insert an M3x8 screw into either end, before inserting a rubber pad, followed by a plastic pad, and repeat the same process on the remaining two bearing clips. The orientation is important here, so take note of the order of both pads, rubber inserted first, then plastic second. Back to the underside of our wire carriage now, where you'll notice the three recesses for the bearing clips. Starting with the single side, place the clip down into position, and tighten both screws, just enough to grab the threads for now and keep the clip in place, before sliding in one of the three remaining bearings. Making sure to align the bearing so that it's centered on the bearing clip. Looking through one end of the bearing, make sure it's orientated so that the rows of balls are equal on both sides, in an X shape. Maintain bearing position and tighten both screws a little further just barely to maintain its position and orientation. We will tighten screws firmly later on. Double check bearing position to ensure it's centered, as well as orientation. We're going to repeat the same process on the opposite side, so place the two bearing clips into position, before pushing the bearings into place. Again, orientate the bearings so that the rows of balls are lined up correctly, 
In essence, this ensures the rods that go through the middle rest on the two rows of balls rather than just one. Although unlike the previous bearing, position the bearings closer to the center of the wire carriage. The bearings shouldn't touch the edge of the pocket, but alignment is important here. Proceed carefully and make sure that both bearings are as close to the center of the wire carriage as possible and do not touch any pocket edge. Just like the first, maintain the bearings position and slightly tighten the screws, just enough to maintain the position and orientation of the bearings. We will tighten the screws firmly later on. So that's our wire carriage now prepared, and time to insert the two remaining metal rods. Proceed to insert the two remaining rods into the bearings already in place. Be very careful here. The rod needs to go through as smooth and as straight as possible, so as to not lose any of the small ball bearings from inside. With both rods in place, we can now go ahead and tighten all screws on the bearing clips down so that they're nice and secure. Bear in mind the rods need to slide through the bearings completely smooth. If you feel any resistance, then loosen the bearing clips off a little until the rods travel smooth. This is particularly more noticeable with the dual bearing side. Next, we'll prepare our 3D printed wire axis rod holders. We're going to insert square nuts into these, so use a small allen key to clean out the recesses before inserting two M3 square nuts into the side. These need to go right down into place. You may find it easier to use the supplied needle nose pliers to get started before switching to the allen key to push down into place far enough so that the holes are lined up nicely. Repeat the same process on all remaining rod holders. Two M3 square nuts into each rod holder, followed by one in the end of each, so three in total. Once done, proceed to install a rod holder onto the end of each rod. Note that with the carriage still upside down at this point, the rod holders should have the insert nuts visible and the holes on either holder pointing inwards. Once confirmed, with the wire carriage now flipped so it's flat side up with the rods beneath, lower the assembly down onto the bed of the frame so that the rods are between the front and rear plates. This needs to be orientated so that the side with two bearings is on the left and the single bearing on the right. So with the rod holder in position, proceed to secure into place with two M3 by 10 screws. Note the orientation of the rod holder here. The hole in the holder should be facing upwards. Proceed to secure both front rod holders into place. Tighten each pair of screws equally, but not completely. They'll be tightened fully later on. With these in place, insert another M3 by 10 screw into the holes we left facing upwards in order to tighten and grip onto the rod. Repeat on the opposite rod end. Repeat the same process at the back end of the carriage too. So secure the rod holders to the frame with M3 by 10 screws without fully tightening, and then insert the M3 by 10 screws into the holes in the top and tighten. With those in place, move the carriage back and forth. It should move freely and smoothly in either direction with very little friction. Once confirmed, move the carriage fully to the front plate before tightening all screws in the front rod holders. After which proceed to move the carriage all the way to the back and tighten the rod end screws here too. Once complete, again move the carriage back and forth to ensure it's still free and smooth. So with the carriage now in place, it's time to get the wire belt into position. To do this, grab the two 3D printed wire belt tensioners as shown here. Note both parts are not identical. In particular, notice how only one part has a hexagonal hole. Starting with the hexagonal hole part then, insert an M3 by 40 screw from the opposite end and loosely thread on an M3 lock nut before pulling it right back into the recess and then remove the screw once done. Finally, insert a single M3 by 10 screw in from the center outwards. Now take one end of the wire belt and push it into the belt holder. Note the orientation of the belt here. The teeth are facing towards the edge of the holder. Secure it by inserting and tightening a single M3 by 10 screw. Next, lean the printer onto the right side, so against the power supply unit, so that it's easier to gain access to the bottom and fix the wire belt holder to the wire carriage using the previous inserted M3 by 10 screw. Note we're using the leftmost hole in the center of the wire carriage. 
the ball end of the correct sized allen key will make this a lot easier to accomplish. Now guide the wire axis belt around the wire axis motor pulley. Make sure the belt is inside the frame, not underneath it, as in the example you see here. After which we can take the free end of the wire belt now coming from the pulley and push it into the groove in the second wire belt tensioner, so the one with the oval shaped hole. And once all the way in, secure it with an M3x10 screw, ensuring the screw sits flush with the outer edge. Now reach for the final metal pulley and insert a pin all the way through. Take the free end of the belt and guide it around the pulley. After which we insert the belt with the pulley into the wire belt idler on the rear of the front plate, installed from the frame construction, up from the bottom. Push the pulley all the way inside the printed part and lightly pull on the belt to lock it into place. Finally, take a single M3x10 screw and secure the second tensioner into position, opposite the first. If it doesn't reach, it may be necessary to remove the first tensioner and reposition the belt a tooth back to provide more space on this side. Now insert an M3x40 screw into the wire belt tensioner hidden just above the belt and tighten it until the screw reaches the nut in the opposite part. Time to set belt tension now, so move the wire carriage all the way to the back. Using a finger, push the belt down. A medium force should be needed to squish the belt until both the parts touch. Alternatively, as with the X-axis belt, use the handy Prusa smartphone app to double check your belt tension. You can change the belt tension by adjusting the long M3x40 screw on the bottom of the wire carriage. Tighten the screw to bring the parts closer together and increase the tension. Release the screws to move the parts apart to decrease the tension. After you set the correct belt tension, tighten up the M3x10 screw on the bottom to fix the wire belt tensioner in place. Finally, we need to align the belt lengthways. To do this, simply make sure that both the top and bottom part of the belt are completely parallel. If not, adjust the belt position by releasing both screws on the Y-axis motor pulley and slightly move it to either side until you reach the best position, before tightening both screws on the pulley. And that's our Y carriage now complete. Move the carriage back and forth slowly and ensure everything is nice and smooth. And once confirmed, we can proceed to installing the heat bed. So we begin by installing eight M3x6 screws in the outer holes on the Y carriage. Do not tighten them completely, a few turns are enough for now. Firstly, just to get them in place, and secondly, because we need to leave room for the expansion joints to slide into position, which is what we'll do next. When it comes to the joints then, slide into position from the side. It's important to make sure the expansion joints are correctly orientated. There is a recess with approximately the same shape as the expansion joint, and the joint must fit into this recess. In essence, they always slide in from the side. Once in place, maintain the position and tighten the M3x6 screw using the 2mm Allen key, repeating the same across all 8 joints. Before a quick visual check to ensure they are all sitting within the recess. Finally, before we place the heat bed into position, place a single spacer on top of the center hole in the Y carriage, and we can then carefully lower the heat bed into place on top of the carriage, taking care to orientate the heat bed so that the cables previously installed are facing the rear left corner. With the bed in place, secure with a single M3x14 screw in the center, although do not tighten down just yet, as before we do that, insert M3x4 screws into the remaining holes all around the heat bed, so these will go into the expansion joints we just installed. Again, just get these in place for now, do not fully tighten the screws just yet. With all screws now in place, we can tighten down, gently but firmly, in the following sequence. First, the center screw, followed by the four side edge screws, and finally the four corner screws. Okay, so with our heat bed now securely in place, we'll go ahead and get the heat bed cables plugged in and finished off. So around the back side of the printer, we have our heat bed cables complete in the textile sleeve, as well as the nylon filament inside, which guides the cables up and away from other components. Begin by pushing all cables through the square opening on the rear side of the electronics chassis. Although note that the filament pokes through the tiny circular hole right below the square opening. 
Place the black heat bed cable on the left terminal just above the power terminals and secure it with the terminal screw. Likewise, place the red heat bed cable on the right terminal before securing it with the terminal screw. Finally, connect the heat bed thermistor cable to the electronics board into the port just beside the red heat bed cable. Time to neaten and finish up with the board now, so reach for the small wireless module, taking kit handle from the edges and not bend those pins, and place it inside the Wi Fi cover, with the connector fitting down into the respective hole and taking care not to bend or damage the pins. We need to use this to cover the opening where we inserted the heat bed cables, with the cable bundle facing upwards and fitting neatly into the groove within the Wi Fi cover. At the same time though, the pins must connect into the electronics board just here, so attach the module and cover as straight as possible while angling the heat bed cable bundle upwards, taking care not to bend those pins, while securing into position using 3 M3 by 12 screws. Notice how when moving the bed, that nylon filament keeps the cable bundle up and out of the way of the bed at all times. Anyways, with that done, we'll move on to another new part with the Mark IV-S, the NFC coil. Using the supplied IPA cleaning pad, wipe off any grease from the underside of the NFC coil, so that's the side without the company logo. After which we proceed to peel off the yellow protective film from the adhesive tape, and proceed to stick it down onto the side just cleaned, taking care not to cover any of the holes at the same time. Once in place, reach for the electronics box panel labelled NFC, and after peeling off the top layer from the adhesive pad we just installed, proceed to stick it to the inside of the box cover in this location, taking care to ensure there's a 2mm gap from the bottom opening. With that in place, reach for the very thin NFC coil cable, and proceed to push fit one end to the board, pressing lightly until you feel a slight click. Take extreme care here as excessive pressure or misalignment can cause irreversible damage, although at the same time you need to ensure it's secure enough so as to not come loose. The other end of the NFC cable connects to the lower left corner of the electronics board into a connector labelled NFC. Again be very careful when press fitting this into place, only until you feel a slight click. That's the electronics board all complete at this point, stop and double check all connections carefully using the diagram displayed here. It's very important that all the power cables are correctly orientated, checking all motor connections too, as well as ensuring all screws are tight. Once verified, we can begin to seal the box, starting with the lower NFC cover. Push two M3 by 10 screws through the available holes, and secure the cover by tightening both M3 by 10 screws until snug. Finally, align the metal cover over the chassis, and secure it with 4 M3 by 6 screws. And that's it, with the steel sheet placed into position on top of the heat bed, the main printer is now fully built and complete, all that's left is to construct and install the filament spool holder and guide to the top of the frame. To do this start by holding the central section and push in and twist both handles into each side a quarter turn. This can then clip into the middle onto the top frame while making sure the spool holder is inclined towards the back of the printer. Next, prepare the filament guide by inserting two M3 nuts into the marked openings on the bottom side, and then insert the two included PTFE tubes into the larger marked openings, and fix the tubes in place with two M3 by 10 screws from the opposite side. Finally, insert the third M3 nut into the opening on the bottom side, before attaching the filament guide onto the spool holder, after which we can secure the guide in place using a single M3 by 18 screw. Prusa Mark IV S build complete. Join me in the next video where we'll complete our checks and calibrate the printer, ready for its first 3D model.